Okay, this is the fifth tutorial in my soft body physics tutorial series. And in this lesson, we're going to take a look at just this simple little plane. That's got a vertex group set up on it. And they're all varied. They're down here at this end. It has a weight of zero. In fact, let's go take a look at the model. And there it is. I just subdivided it with my loop cut and slide. So it's, I think it's zero. No, it's one down here pinned at this end. And then 0 0.9. Those are 0 0.7, 0 0.4. 0.2 and 0. That's the weighting that I have set on it. And the reason being is this. So years ago, if you look at my old tornado videos, when I had a roof flying off, I had done that with with uh, soft bodies, and I had set the weight of these vertices accordingly, so it would kind of bend the tile, the roof tiles would bend a little bit and not be so flat. But it is a performance issue, so I'll kind of give you an idea. Let's run this real quick. I just have the wind in the scene. Just like before, over here, I have it kind of pointing up, though, this time. And I, I would use this for many effects if computers would be a little bit faster. So let's see. So there you see it's trying to, you know, come up off the ground or, or off the roof or whatever. But here's my wind set. Oh, it's at negative, so it's not going to move. So let me just start cranking it up a little bit. And you're going to see, I don't need to run it that long. See, it's trying to come up a little bit. I'll just keep cranking it. A little bit now it starts pleading like this. And then you see it keeps trying to come up and eventually over. I kinda of, kinda of call this my yoga pose. This reminds me of the uh scorpion pose in yoga. Right? But this is a soft body effect. Now this is not something you might think of using for soft bodies, but absolutely soft bodies have a great deal of power. Let's see what the settings are on this real quick. I have the quad set obviously. So down here I have these quad sets so they can't bend at the corners. And I have both the these compression and the stretching of the springs set so they can't compress or stretch like that. So they're both labeled all the way up. And one thing to watch for is right up in here is this goal strength. The, the, when you first come in the goal strength is set at like 0.7 by default. Right, so now if, let me see if I can bring this down here, see if it makes a difference in this case or not. Let's see, it's trying to raise up. Now let me go to 100%, see if I notice a difference in this. Uh, maybe a little bit, it extends even further. So basically, let me go down here to it's maybe 50%, see if you see the difference down here. Well, you start to see a difference. So it's based on a percentage of the weight of the values in your vertex group. All right. So, but that doesn't quite, I never really quite figured this out to a T. This is something that always, because if that was always the case and that was set at, you know, one in the first place, and that would be 0.48. Well, then this thing should go flying off. So it is never, I don't quite ever have a handle on it, but I mean, I can do a lot of cool things with soft bodies anyway. But let's go see if we can grab this wind and see if the whole thing would actually take off with a stronger strength since I have that goal set down. No, so I don't quite get it, but so what I'll have to look into that further. But so what I've always done is uh, anytime I come in, anytime I'm going to use. A vertex group I just always crank it to a hundred percent and then I at least have a baseline to work from in here but you can you can see the effect now there's one other thing I haven't showed you that if uh, right down here on the bottom on this particular one as well I had to implement soft body collision like this because if I don't you'll see what happens well at least at, at certain wind levels it'll happen in this case it's not so bad but let me, let's get a shorter, a lighter wind down here, maybe like this. And you see it starts crashing into itself and intersecting like that. So that's not going to work. So that's where you have to have that. There it is, soft body collision. That should fix it right up.
and there it is. So you could make pleating things and all you could make all kinds of stuff. Soft bodies rock. I'm telling you, they really rock. The only reason, like I said, they're just too slow for me. All right, I'll give you an idea. Let's just say I'll take this object here and I'm just going to duplicate it a few times. Shift D Y. Whoops, got the wrong one. Shift D Y. I'm just going to make several copies. Maybe I'll make some down this way as well. So you don't get, you know, carried away in making some great cool design and, you know, want to do some really cool stuff and then realize the render is going to take weeks. <laughs> All right. So now the first time I run it, you're not going to see any real difference. You're going to think, oh, okay, what's the big deal about that? All right. So it all seems to be working just fine, right? But however, now when it has to come back and start recalculating, now you see that it's right. Soft bodies, it has a lot more to calculate than a rigid body object. But so if you have a super fast computer and you have, you know, good time management or you have a render farm account or something like that, then, then it could be worth it. For me, I'll stick with real time stuff for the time being. All right, well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.